Y'all get ready? Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey, you guys. So I'm back with another podcast today. So I know a lot of you guys have been asking me to talk about the whole Jeffrey Epstein situation. So, you know, it's been crazy. The rabbit hole definitely goes deep. All types of conspiracies and, you know, different things going on concerning that. Um, So if you guys don't know, literally documents were revealed. This was about seven days ago. Documents were revealed and it revealed a lot of high profile names that were attached to the whole Jeffrey Epstein situation. People from John Glenn, Bill Richardson, Prince Andrew and other elitist people. Newly unsealed court documents include a sworn deposition from 2016 when an alleged victim of Jeffrey Epstein was asked which politically connected and financially powerful people she was directed to have sex with as a minor. That woman, Virginia Gouffre, has long accused Epstein and his one-time girlfriend, Ghislaine Maxwell, of sexually abusing and recruiting her into the alleged sex trafficking ring. But the new documents name more names, former U.S. Senator George Mitchell and former New Mexico Governor Bill Richardson. Richardson issued a statement today calling the allegations completely false. Governor Richardson has never met Ms. Gouffre. Mitchell echoed that denial in his own statement, saying he has never met, spoken with, or had any contact with Ms. Gouffre. The court documents stem from a now-settled defamation lawsuit between Gouffre and Maxwell. Gouffre has been among the most vocal of Epstein's alleged victims. You know, before you know it, I'm being lent out to politicians and to academics and to people that you, royalty. In her deposition, Gouffre mentions, among others, Prince Andrew of Great Britain and high-powered attorney Alan Dershowitz, claiming Gouffre was trafficked to have sex with him in New York, Palm Beach, New Mexico, the U.S. Virgin Islands, and on Epstein's private jet known as the Lolita Express. Dershowitz told CBS News today these documents exonerate him. He followed up with a statement saying, Gouffre invented the false accusations against me only in 2014 when her lawyers pressured her to do so for financial reasons. I never had sex with an underage person, Dershowitz claimed. I never socialized or had sex with any woman connected to Jeffrey Epstein. The court documents also include some new details about President Trump's relationship with Epstein. Gouffre says Trump and Epstein were friends. Flight records show then-citizen Trump flew on Epstein's jet in 1997. But Gouffre also said, according to the documents, she never had sex with Donald Trump, nor did she witness him have sex with any other girls. The president says he cut off Epstein years ago. Well, Jeffrey Epstein is sitting in a prison cell in Manhattan on federal sex trafficking charges. His trial is set for June 2020. Prosecutors say more alleged victims have come forward in that case. They are considering charging even more people. Epstein faces up to 45 years in prison if convicted. Um, the whole Prince Andrew thing is old. That's been around. People have been knowing about his ties to Jeffrey Epstein for years. If you actually followed the case, because this case has been going on for like, I want to say 10, 15 years. The usually stoic and silent Buckingham Palace has become very vocal, denying allegations in a federal lawsuit tying His Royal Highness Prince Andrew to sex crimes with underage minors. There is nothing to suggest this is true, a palace statement says. We have no record of such a meeting. The second son of Queen Elizabeth is not charged in the ongoing federal lawsuit, but it puts him right in the middle of an alleged sexual abuse ring from 1999 to 2002 that was allegedly run by international financier Jeffrey Epstein. Epstein pleaded guilty to solicitation of prostitution. In 2008, he was sentenced to 18 months behind bars. He served 13 months. Epstein was known to hobnob with the rich and famous, including Prince Andrew. When the two were spotted walking in Central Park in 2011 after Epstein had become a registered sex offender, the British press went crazy. You're embarrassment, sir. Prince Andrew, you're resigning. His friendship cost Prince Andrew his job as the UK trade representative. Now the alleged victims are suing the US government, saying their rights had been violated in the Epstein plea deal. And at least one victim has named Prince Andrew by name. Jane Doe number three was forced to have sexual relations with this prince when she was a minor in three separate geographical locations in London, New York, and on Epstein's private island in the U.S. Virgin Islands. According to the suit, young women were paid to come to Epstein's home in Florida to give him massages, 
where they were allegedly sexually assaulted. The defense says the girls lied about their ages and that there was never any sexual molestation. Prince Andrew has not been charged, but the allegations have led to two public denials from the royal family, including one that brazenly names the accuser. It is emphatically denied that HRH, the Duke of York, had any form of sexual contact or relationship with Virginia Roberts. The allegations made are false and without any foundation. The federal lawsuit also names high-profile criminal defense lawyer Alan Dershowitz, who calls the allegations unfounded. She is a liar. She has charged Bill Clinton with having sex with her on the island when Secret Service records will obviously show he was never on the island. She claimed to meet the queen. You know, I mean, this is an incredible story. It's, mm -hmm. it's now an international story. And of course, uh, you've got Prince Andrew involved, uh, Jeffrey Epstein, the American who allegedly uh, was providing this girl um, to, to him, according to her, uh, has pled guilty mm -hmm. to uh, soliciting sex from underage girls. Uh, he's a registered sex offender. What do you know about Virginia Roberts? Well, you're right. It's all yeah. over the British networks, all yeah. of them. And we now see her because this is who the New York Post is saying is Ms. Roberts right here in today's edition of the New York Post. And that's a picture Post. of her with Prince Andrew. That's uh, right. And, and that's then her right. today. So it does show them together. But when you read this, this filing in the federal court in Florida, there are many more people that are named too. And it'll be very interesting to see where all this goes. And it's two separate suits. This is a federal suit yeah. because the alleged victims are saying, we didn't know about a plea deal and we should have been privy to all the conditions of it. The conspiracy community have been calling out Jeffrey Epstein. They've been calling out the discrepancy in the justice system, um, how Jeffrey Epstein was able to get away with just simply probation. You know, it's clearly because he was rich. But now this case has gone back into the media. And so the information came out a few days ago, and literally the very next day, um, it was announced that Jeffrey Epstein allegedly committed suicide in his cell. And we had a good discussion about this on Instagram. I thought it was complete and utter bullshit. Um, I also spoke about the ties with Hillary and Bill Clinton as well um, to Jeffrey Epstein. Um, I talked about this a while back. I even broke down in a video of Hillary Clinton's um, ties to Harvey Weinstein and how a lot of these people, you know, it's the whole thing. You wash my back, I wash yours. You know, politics, the royal family, celebrities, you know, there's just a lot of things that tie them together. And one of the greatest things you can tie people together is by getting them involved in pedophilia, sex rings, bestiality, and things like that. Because once somebody commits that ultimate sin, you have something to hold over their head forever. You know, it's no different than what's going on in the whole um, R. Kelly situation. So basically, I just wanted to come on here and just, you know, do an update real quick. We were talking about the whole Trump situation. If you guys don't know, he had retweeted Terrence K. Williams, who's the guy who went viral a few years ago for eating chicken. So, I hear a lot of black people on Facebook talking about they want to move to Africa. Well, move your ass to Africa. I ain't going with you. Fuck that. I'll buy your passport. Because you know what? People in Africa don't even like blacks in America, so I don't even know why y'all even want to go there. And you ain't even from there. You was born here in the U.S. So, and then a lot of people that want to go back, they use government assistance. Well, I hate to break the news, but in Africa, you ain't getting food stamps. You ain't getting no child support check. Why you think Obama's daddy went back to Africa? Because he didn't have to pay child support. You know, he's a staunch conservative. You know, and I, and I watch him every now and then. Some of the things he says I agree with, a lot of the stuff he says I don't agree with, but you know, he's entitled to his opinion, just like I'm entitled to mine. So basically he went on a long rant. He connected um, Jeffrey Epstein to the Clintons. You know, a lot of people are saying, oh, well, it's baseless and you know, he's just a conspiracy theorist and all this other stuff. But regardless of that, his uh, rant went viral and the president of the United States retweeted him. You know, like I told you guys on my live stream last week, I'm like, I literally feel like I'm living in a reality TV show where we have a, the president of the free world is literally just engaging on Twitter like a regular citizen. And it's like, even if you agree with Terrence K. Williams, like have some cooth about yourself. You don't retweet something like that when you're the president. You know, he's just, he's just messy. So I want you guys to go ahead and check out Terrence's video really quick. Also, after Donald Trump retweeted him, 
he was confronted earlier this morning about that. And he basically has doubled down. He's standing 10 toes in his retweet. And, you know, that's how he feels about it. He doesn't have any regrets about retweeting it. So I want you guys to go ahead and check this out. And I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. Mm -mm, shaking my head. I'm not surprised. I told y'all last month this was going to happen. But didn't nobody want to listen to me. But then guess what? Next month he did. And you know what? All the liberals were calling me a conspiracy theorist. Saying, Terrence, you coming up with crazy conspiracies and you need to be banned from Twitter. And then guess what? The man really ended up dead. And you know what? He had, he had information on the Clintons and the man ended up dead. Now, for some odd reason, for some odd reason, people that have information on the Clintons end up dead. And they usually die from suicide. Come on now. Come on now. Now, how do everybody die from suicide that got information on you? Okay? You know what? To be honest with you, I don't want to know nothing about the Clintons. Don't tell me nothing. I'm not trying to end up there. I don't even want to know if Hillary was digging in her nose. I don't want to know if Bill Clinton eat boogers. Don't tell me nothing. I don't want to end up there. I don't want to hear it. Nope. Ah, ah, la, 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 la. Lala, I can't hear you. I don't want to hear it. I'm not finna end up dead like everybody else. You know what? Now, I'm not going to say who killed that man cause, because, you know, I could end up being. But word, but, but, but the word around the street is the Clintons did it. I'm just, I, I don't know, though. Hey, 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 hey. I'm just another black man on Twitter. I don't know nothing. <laughs> I don't know nothing. I, I, I guess I don't know nothing. But so somebody tell me what's going on because clearly now how you end up dead and you are a high profile case in prison. Come on now. And you on suicide watch and you die of suicide in prison. Yeah. Okay. Somebody not doing their job or somebody got paid not to do their, not to do their job. So somebody can get knocked off. So information don't come out, but I don't know nothing. I'm just another black man on Twitter. Yeah, he's a very highly respected conservative pundit. He's a big Trump fan. Uh, that was a retweet. That wasn't for me. That was from him. But he's a man who has uh, half a million followers, a lot of followers, and he's respected. And as you know, Bill Barr wants to do an entire investigation of the whole Epstein matter. What happened? He's been uh, going on for a long time. That's been going on for a long time. The whole Epstein episode. And I know it's under investigation by Attorney General Barr, and I'm sure he's going to be handling it. The, uh, the retweet, which is what it was, is the retweet, was from somebody that's a uh, very respected conservative pundit. I know he was on his plane 27 times, and he said he was on the plane four times. But when they checked the plane log, Bill Clinton, who is a very good friend of Epstein, he was on the plane about 27 or 28 times. So why did he say four times? And then the question you have to ask is, did Bill Clinton go to the island? Because Epstein had an island that was not a good place, as I understand it, and I was never there. So you have to ask, did Bill Clinton go to the island? That's the question. If you find that out, you're going to know a lot. All right, so you guys just watched the video of Terrence, and you guys also watched Trump defending sharing his baseless conspiracy theory you know like i said the rabbit hole goes deep i'm not buying this whole jeffrey epstein suicided himself um now there's new reports coming out this morning that supposedly there's some broken bones um i don't know if when people hang themselves do they break bones i mean if you were to break a bone i would think it'd be in the neck they're saying that it wasn't in the neck so i don't know um i do feel like either he was murdered to keep quiet because when high profile people like this get charged for something, especially when you have dirt on everybody else, a lot of these people are cowards. They're going to take a lot of people down with them. I would not be surprised if the same thing happens in the R. Kelly situation. A lot of people in the industry ran with R. Kelly, kicked it with him, stayed at his house, did videos with him. That's why they were all turning on each other a few months ago when I went live and we talked about the whole thing with, you know, Nick Cannon and Russell Simmons and how everybody was coming out apologizing and trying to distance themselves. If R. Kelly ends up getting found guilty, he's definitely going to tell it all. He's going to spill all the tea. And I believe that that's what they were scared that Jeffrey Epstein would do. Because if he has to go to prison for the next, you know, 500 years or some shit, he's taking everybody down with him. And when you're talking about powerful people 
from astronauts to, you know, scientists, politicians to the royal family, these are really powerful people. They're not going to, you know, have their names sullied because you don't fucked up. That's what they're not going to have done. So I wouldn't put it past anybody to have, you know, killed Jeffrey Epstein. But then another part of me, being a slight conspiracy theorist, the man is a billionaire. You know, now there's new information coming out that he was a fake billionaire. You know, whatever. It is what it is. Fake or not, the man had money. He had connections. So I would not be surprised if maybe it wasn't really his body in that cell. And he's living on some island in Boonfuck Fuji. You know what I'm saying? In self-imposed exile like Russell Simmons. You know, so he very much could still be alive and just be out on an island somewhere faking his death like Machiavelli. You know what I'm saying? So there's a lot of stuff. The rabbit hole goes deep. I'm not surprised at all by the supposed death of Jeffrey Epstein if he really is dead. Or maybe he got away. You know, so the whole situation is crazy, but the case does not end here. So even with him being out of the picture, quote unquote, they're still going to move forward. They're still charging a lot of his accomplices. So there's going to be a lot of charges, you know, towards people who were recruiting, um, towards a lot of people who were involved. And, you know, I think that's the saddest part of all this. Once you get into that landscape where you're making so much money and you have so much power and prestige, a lot of these people are like the weirdest sickos that you can even meet or even deal with. You know, when you have that much money, like they say, an idle mind is the devil's playground. And when you have money and you have people who fawn at your feet and who are willing to do anything because of your name or your title or because of what you have, that's a lot for one human being to deal with. You have to be a very strong person to be able to deal with fame, power, and money. You have to have the highest level of integrity. And a lot of these people at the end of the day, they're just human. They don't have any more integrity than the next person. You know, so I'm not surprised by all this. I'm not surprised that they're all throwing each other under the bus. You know, Trump was also on the plane back in 97 before the island was named Lolita Express. Um, the girl did come on and say that she never witnessed Trump do anything wrong. President Trump is speaking out about Jeffrey Epstein, the billionaire accused of sex trafficking. He was a fixture in Palm Beach. Uh, I had a falling out with him a long time ago. I don't think I've spoken to him for 15 years. Epstein was actually banned from Mar-a-Lago, according to court documents obtained by Inside Edition, after Epstein was accused of sexually assaulting an underage girl at the club. I was not a fan of his, that I can tell you. I was not a fan of his. And this is your first look inside Epstein's opulent $77 million mansion in Manhattan. It was featured on the cover of Architectural Digest in 1995. The mansion has a heated sidewalk, so snow and ice melts during the winter. Epstein's monogram, J.E., appears right here in brass on the doorway. And inside, beneath the stairs, there's a lead-lined panic room, like something out of a James Bond movie. The FBI raid on the mansion uncovered sex toys, a life-size female doll hanging from a chandelier, and hundreds of lewd photos. Bill Cosby, who is now serving three to ten years in prison for sexual assault, used to live in a townhouse directly opposite the mansion. These are pages from Epstein's Little Black Book. They were first obtained by the website Gawker. They show numerous entries for the rich and famous, Donald Trump, actor Alec Baldwin, and singer Courtney Love. Page after page are headlined Massage Paris, Massage UK, Massage Florida. Below the cities, a list of first names with contact numbers. There are 21 email addresses and contact numbers in the book for former President Bill Clinton, and he's speaking out today. President Clinton knows nothing about the terrible crimes Jeffrey Epstein is charged with in New York, a statement says. In the statement, Clinton acknowledges he flew four times on Epstein's private jet in 2002 and 2003. Shantae Davis was a flight attendant on the jet known as the Lolita Express because it allegedly shuttled underage girls between Epstein's homes. She told Inside Edition Clinton did nothing improper on those trips. She says she made him peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, and Clinton took her shopping in Africa. They had shut down a jewelry store for us, and I helped him pick out a bracelet for Chelsea. So I feel like he's definitely trying to divert and, you know, keep his name out of the whole Jeffrey Epstein situation. And he's trying to divert it towards the Clintons. And Bill Clinton was definitely, you know, really good friends with Jeffrey and you know, travel to the, you know, island several times on the Lolita Express. 
Um, y'all have to just do y'all's own research. It's not going to be a full breakdown of the whole Jeffrey Epstein situation. I've been researching and um, following up on this case since, like, I would say, like, the 2011, 2012 when he was first going to court. So I know a lot of ins and outs of the case. So, I mean, at this point, it is what it is. Um, Trump is going to stand 10 toes down in anything he does on social media, especially when it comes to trying to divert attention away from a high profile case like this. But, um, I think a lot of shit is going to hit the fan. And even if all this information ends up coming out and these people are guilty of this, does it really change anything? You know, it'll be business as usual soon enough. I think the whole, everything just needs to be wiped. The whole slate needs to be wiped clean. You know, these people are just so corrupt and just disgusting. And it's sad that, you know, a lot of young women and, and men were subjugated to shit like this. And I had to think to myself, where were the parents? Like, I think of myself, you know, being 15, 16, I never really left my neighborhood like that. You know, I went to a few spots, maybe some parties and things like that. But like, how was your 15 year old just on a private jet traveling the world? Like, I I'm confused. You know, these weren't 21 and 22 year olds. So again, are these parents just as guilty as the R. Kelly parents where they pimped their kids out, looked the other way because of who these people were? <laughs> you know, if your child was able to hang out with Prince Andrew or a billionaire, you can get some type of kickback. Would you sell your child out? So those are just some of the things I think about when I look at cases like this. The whole thing is just really disturbing. But anyways, I don't want this video to be too long. Let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts in this entire situation concerning the death or the suicide or the conspiracy of Jeffrey Epstein and um, Donald Trump getting flack for retweeting Terrence K. Williams' tweet only to double down and say, you know what? He doesn't regret retweeting it and he stands by it. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. All right. Deuces.